In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn normal images and textures into seamless textures in Photoshop using an amazing feature I didn't know existed until recently. So as a 3D artist, textures are still the best way to get realistic results on my models. But the problem is what happens when the image ends? Outside that image bounds, the image will tile and it looks unnatural and really distracting too depending on the size and scale of your texture. So the best route if you're still using real images is to make them seamless. And it's a lot easier said than it is done. But thanks to the new pattern view feature in Photoshop, we can do this really easily and quickly. So first, let's find some images. I suggest using free websites like Unsplash, Pexels, and Pixabay. I'll put the links down in the comments down below. Search for something you're interested in in terms of a texture that you'd like to use such as metal, wood, panels, geometric designs, rust, whatever you need. Now I'll be upfront with you, the technique I'm gonna show you today really only works great with abstract textures. If you have something with perspective, with depth of field, or sometimes with geometric shapes, it can get tricky, but it's not impossible. It just takes a little bit more work. I'm gonna show you a few basic ways to use this technique, and with some creativity, I'm sure you can find new ways to use this to make awesome seamless textures for your own uses. Okay, so here's a bunch of texture that I just downloaded. I have never seen these or used these before. I promise I did not practice ahead of time. That might be good or bad. <laughs> so let's start with this very first one. This is a very messy, concrete texture with a lot of aging. I love it. Uh, what I'm going to do with uh, the zoom tool, which is letter Z in your keyboard, I'm going to click and drag out. Make sure your scrubby tool is checked. That allows you to um, scrub and zoom in and out with moving your mouse. Now go to view, turn on pattern preview. And now look, we can see the tile. If you zoom out, you will see extreme tileage. And that's what we don't want. We don't want to see those edge borders, the differentiating difference values and details that show you when the image is ending and beginning. So we're going to get rid of most of those so that it'll be a little bit smoother of a tile. It's still tile, but it'll look smoother and less abrupt. And I'm using a black brush here. Now on a normal image like this, you can only paint within the image, right? When you go outside the image, nothing happens because there's nowhere for it to go. But if we have this pattern preview turned on, if I paint outside the image bounds, look, automatically, I'm crossing over into the bottom of the image. Now, even though I'm painting on the upper image, I'm actually painting on the bottom of the same image. So it all crosses over and you can do really crazy stuff that you really couldn't do before. This allows you to not only draw perfect patterns, but you can also use a clone stamp tool, which is what I use most of the time to make these types of textures endless or seamless. So to do that, press the letter S, gives you this little stamp looking tool, hold Alt on Windows or Option on Mac and sample from a clean area, which is kind of like the copy function, and then let go of that Alt or Option and click, left click to paste. It's like, I like to call it the copy and paste brush for those who are newer to this tool. So now we're gonna copy from one area and paste over the edges. We're mostly we're gonna be pasting or, or painting over the seams, right? The edges of the image bounce. And you can see this blue line, this blue border shows you kind of the edges. It might be a little hard to see unless you're looking at this full screen, but there is a blue boundary border that shows you the edge of the image. So I'm just copy and pasting on top of uh, that blue line to kind of cover up the seam. And as, as long as I do it nicely without making distracting, you know, spots, it's gonna make the texture pretty seamless. Look, already, it's pretty seamless. Like the edges are soft and they're kind of blending into the next image above or below it. That's what we want. Now I like to look outside at the other images and try to find things that give away the seam. To me, this dark line, uh, this vertical edge uh, shows me that, hey, there's some spots here that they could look better. So I'm gonna copy from the middle of the image, kind of paste over a part of it, maybe a little bit of a larger brush. There we go. And then paste over here. And you can also copy and paste uh, outside your image bounds. So my bot, my image bounds is over here in the bottom right, right here. But I can, you know, do the same work over here if that makes it easier for you. And for me, it does. Um, this gray spot is a little bit obvious. So there we go. I just made a seamless concrete texture. You can work in it more if you want um, to make it a little bit smoother. But that's the gist of it. Let's open up a few others, and I'll show you a few other techniques that I use for this type of work. This pattern is mostly a vertical repeating pattern, but it will repeat left to right, obviously because this is like, a, I think it's called corrugated tin or corrugated um, metal uh, metal sheet. So let's turn on our pattern view and see how it looks. It looks terrible. And you don't really notice this when you're looking at a single image view, but the top of the image is way wider and brighter. Whereas the bottom, look at that, you're gonna see the darks, now you're probably noticing it. The bottom is much darker and blacker. So uh, we can do a few things to fix that to make the tile a little bit smoother. And then of course we will be using some other tricks to make it uh, 
make it look you know smoother um so first i want to darken the top of the image only so i'm going to turn off um so i'm going to create a adjustment layer which is a non-destructive way to alter your images i want to make a levels and i'm going to uh drag out the black point to make the blacks darker but look over here we have the mask the layer mask for the levels which is why i love adjustment layers because you can use a mask and i'm going to use a black brush very large and i'm going to paint black only on the layer mask on the bottom now to use masks the right way in when you're doing this we actually need to turn off pattern preview so i only want to darken the bottom so i'm going to paint black on the layer mask of the adjustment layer and there we go that's kind of uh darkening the top sorry if i said that wrong earlier and it looks almost too dark so i'm gonna fix this a little bit see what i'm doing i'm just basically it's like an adjustment in lightroom or i'm only adjusting the top part of the image because i wanted to be black just like the bottom now it's hard to match it perfectly let's turn on our pattern preview and see what this looks like a little better not quite as erupt as it was before so that's a good start now the other thing that is makes these types of patterns really tricky is to make sure everything aligns uh, in a geometric way in this case vertically these metal uh, corrugated curves don't line up perfectly they kind of offset and that happens naturally when you take pictures it's nearly impossible to take a completely flat and perfect image not only does your camera angle you know alter the straightness of your image and the patterns therein but also your camera lens will also distort things on the edges more than the center any lens does that the wider the angle of the lens the more spherical distortion there will be around the edges but that's a topic for another video so to line up these things a little bit better i'm going to press Control a which does a select all and in this case it selects the whole image let me turn off pattern preview because i'm getting kind of a headache there we go it grabs our whole selection and uh, we're going to actually distort our image to mostly line up with itself so let's turn off the padlock or the lock feature on your base layer there which allows us to actually alter this and skew it and stuff if you don't have that um, if you have that locked you can't alter the base layer and at least in uh, transforming ways so turn back on pattern preview take some ibuprofen and let's zoom in here to the top border what i'm going to do is press v and as long as show controls is checked that gives us these handy dandy little controls which allows us to stretch and move things but in this case i want to move uh, the top i want to shift it over so i'm going to hold control and i'm going to click on this top border look what this allows us to do i'm literally almost it looks like i mean it is basically a 3d distortion in a 2d view um, but i'm going to drag it straight over let me undo this so just so you can hit cancel i'm going to do that again control click just the corner and then hold shift and drag straight to the right there we go it says i'm at dot negative three degrees and to me, that lines up these shadows much better than before. And over here, there's a little bit of a mismatch. So I'm going to drag this over as well, the, the top right handle to the right. There we go. Make sure it lines up as best as possible. Hit enter. Now the vertical lines are mostly lined up with themselves. All right, Z for zoom, hit fit to screen. So we're seeing uh, just the original image here. And now we're going to do the cloning that I just did before. And we're going to, uh, you know, blend the tops and bottoms as well as the sides. We do have some blemishes here that are gonna stand out and really make this thing look tiled. Even if the edges look great, the center of the image can give it away as well. So let's erase this real quick by using the clone stamp tool. Alt click right there in that crevice. And remember to line up your brush before you click. Because if you click accidentally in the wrong place, like right here, your brush will forever be offset like that. In that case, you need to reset. So I'm gonna hit undo. I'm going to sample from up here, drag my mouse straight down, line it up, and then I can paint away have fun you can even turn your brush down in opacity say 30 percent transparent to blend in those edges a lot smoother i'm going to sample from here and erase this part as well hit number zero on my keyboard to get full uh full opacity boom already gone nice those blemishes are gone there's one over here too sample from there paint right there cool okay now we're ready to do the bl the edge blending so view pattern preview let's go to the top s for clone stamp i'm going to sample from right here and I'm going to paste right there. Make, make sure it's lined up as good as you can get it. And look, remember, a larger brush will be softer. I actually have made some really, really soft brushes. I have a video about that. Uh, just my last video, actually, is how to make what I call the super soft brush, which is so handy for all kinds of stuff, including this. Um, so there we go. We're pasting. Let's do the bottom part. Well, we're getting kind of this weird brightness and darkness thing here. Let me see if that's because of the levels. I'm not sure yeah maybe it's too dark 
There you go. Look at that. That looks like a perfect match from top to bottom. These are the top of the image and the bottom of the image. Um, well, actually, because because we did some painting, that, that looks way better than before. Awesome. Um, let's continue to do some little clone stamping and look over here, see if we can see any edges. I can't really barely see a seam anymore. And the top, I don't really see a seam. Now we just need to do the left and right seams, um, which already look pretty good, but they're not perfect. And actually, look at this. This is sort of hard to explain, but the middle um, crevice or the bend, the middle, the middle, ah, what is this called? The piece is not as wide as the others. That's because a photo was, you know, cropped at a certain area and doesn't suit our needs. So let's actually crop everything in just a little bit. So this to the center of the, the shadow of that crevice and this, I don't think I've said the word crevice so many times in my life. Drag this into the center of that crevice. There we go. Ooh. Maybe that's a cringy word for some of you. And let's turn on our pattern preview again. Did we fix it? We did. Look at that. They're all equidistant. Noise. I like it. Here's a nice rusty metal texture. This one should be straight and simple. Turn on pattern preview. Ooh, we got some vignetting. Here's another thing that lenses do with real world photos. Uh, about 90% of the time there will be vignetting, which comes from aperture and lenses. There is some darkening over here and along the bottom. We can fix that with a few different ways. We can use that adjustment layer that I did earlier or a little bit quicker and dirtier way to do it is in this case, dodge, dodge and burn. We're gonna use the dodge tool, which brightens things up. I'm gonna do mid tones at 50%. A few clicks in the right space can do it sometimes. Don't overdo it because this is a destructive editing uh, method. Maybe brighten up the shadows a little bit. It will wash things out, so be careful. We also have highlights. Oh, no, don't do highlights. Yeah, it looks like mid-tones is where most of it's at. There we go. It's a little better than before. The bottom center has some as well. Cool. Okay, let's erase this blob right here. Because that's a, a giveaway of tiling. And these scratches as well. Unless you want to keep the scratches, they will definitely um, show that your image is uh, fake and tiling. So erase that one. That one. There. Okay, that was with the uh, Spot Healing Brush, by the way. It's a magical brush. I love it. So S for Clone Stamp. Let's paint over that edge. Sample from the middle. Let's paint over that edge. Also, I'm going to offset my patterning, because if you copy, if you do too much clone and stamping, look, Spot is the same with that spot. That's a dead giveaway. So let's offset that. Let's ruin that pattern by painting over some of that areas with other less interesting, less detailed areas. There we go. Awesome. That's great. Look at that. No obvious edges, maybe a little bit over here. That's why it's important to change your view. Look at it from different places and see if you can find the edges. Cool. All right. That's good to me. Here's a cool one and made us really underexposed, but we need to do some work on it first. Unless you want this to be a tiling wall texture with a door, which I don't, you can keep it, but I'm going to erase it by selecting it, hitting Shift F5 and Enter on Content Aware. Boom. It's gone. I friggin' love Content Aware. It's so great. Um, there's a little piece of trash down here. What is that? Oh, can we read the label? Some medicine. I can't read it, but here we go. Let's erase that. Spy healing brush. Also magical. Thank you, Photoshop. All right. Uh, let's turn on our pattern preview. I'm pretty sure these don't line up. They don't. That's so great. Now I can show you how to fix that. Like just like we did in the last one, except this one requires much less ibuprofen or Advil. Control A, V for the move tool. Turn off your lock right there. And now let's control drag this down. Hold shift so it can only go straight up and down. Shift is really handy for that. Perfect. Look at that. Nice flat horizon. Me likey. Now down here, it's a little off. Um, that might be because of lens distortion. I'm not sure yet. Uh, let's hit enter to confirm that. Transform. Yeah, see, it's not lining up. But we can maybe do some painting to fix that. So I'm going to sample from over here with a smaller brush. It's going to paint right here to make it line up and just blend it in nice and smooth. No one knows that I did anything. <laughs> Sweet. Um, while I love this, this destroyed painted wall here, that is um, a problem for tiling. So I'm just going to erase that with a spot healing brush. I like these little blemishes. I'm going to leave them and let's paint the edges to make it blend better. Let's use a blank, boring area. Paint over right here. Paint over up there. Be careful we don't paint over the concrete feature. To do that, let's sample from the middle right there. Line it up and paint. Nice. All right. Looking pretty good. 
How's our tiling over here? It looks great. Okay, as I zoom out, um, this white streak right here is really throwing me off. And other than that, I'm pretty happy with it. I don't know what I would use that for, but it's a cool picture and a good example of some of the handy tricks that I use to do this type of work. All right, here's a really cool one that I would love to use on a mega structure of some kind. Um, now this is the side of a building, but because I am an artist, I am just immediately thinking of weird ways to use this image in wrong but awesome situations. <laughs> um, but I know already these lines are not gonna line up. This picture is taken slightly to the left, and I think up a little bit, or rather pointing down. Um, because of the angle of this building, I can just, that's my brain is calculating things. So let's turn this on. Yep, it's not. It's, it's shifting is going at a weird angle. So this needs to go, uh, we need to expand this top left corner needs to go up and this bottom right corner needs to go down. And we need to crop it in to cut into this vertical line. Let me show what I'm talking about. Cut it into the, we can uh, you know, slice that line in half. So let's do that first. So C for crop. Drag it in right to the middle of that vertical beam. That's great so that this half of the beam should meet this half of the beam, although the color will not be correct. At least that's how it should be geometrically. Now let's do some distorting. Turn off our lock. Press Control T. And I'm actually gonna get out of that. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit first. I'm really far out there. Sorry for those of you not viewing this full screen. V for move, hold Control, and then Shift and click and drag out. And I try to find some vertical lines. I try to find some horizontal lines like these window blind things and have them go completely horizontal to the top edge of your picture. And that looks about as good as I can get. Let's do the same with the bottom. But I'm going to have kind of a back and forth ping pong effect because as I adjust the bottom, it's going to throw off the top that I just did. But that's just how it works. So the bottom looks great now, but watch the top is probably going to be a little bit messed up. Maybe not. Yeah, I can't tell. The top, actually this part gets stretched the least when I distort the bottom and vice versa. So that looks pretty great. Let's turn on our pattern preview and see how this looks. Whoa, sweet. The only obvious tiling is just because these windows all stop at the same point, but things line up. Oh, look at that, vertical misalignment. Uh, where's my actual image? Let's, let's fix that. So what is this? It's almost perfect right here. As we get to the right, it gets offset. Yeah, this is the edge right here. Okay, so move tool, control, click, and then hold shift and drag this over a little bit. How's that? That's good, that's good. Yeah, that's pretty close right there. Hit enter to confirm. Now let's do some clone stamping, but we have to be careful because there's so many vertical slits here, uh, it might get messy. So let's sample from here. And I'm gonna try to line it up really close. There we go. Just gonna paint over this edge. Working pretty good. Let's copy from right here. There we go. We just wanna offset these patterns. Paint right there, line it up. Okay. Yeah, that got a little messy there. And here too, it's sort of, it's almost like a negative effect is happening. So let's just clean that up. Get, uh, get some black blinds on top of that. You gotta be really pixel perfect when you have a design, a, a, a pattern, this geometrically, you know, specific. Okay. The edges we don't need to worry about, actually, honestly. Those beams meeting, eh, you know, cool. I'm definitely saving this to use in Blender later. Oh, we got a little wiggle going on here because I didn't paste something straight. We can use a much smaller brush for these thinner lines. So I caught, I sampled from up there and let's correct this wiggle. Holding shift, you can paint straight lines, which is so handy. I'm gonna make a 40% brush and just kind of smoothly fade out. There we go. This is really abrupt to me, so I'm gonna sample from here. And I'm going to paint over it. I remember I'm still at 40%. So that means I can do a few brush strokes and basically make a gradient fade off. There we go with my brush. That looks cool. It makes it less obvious. That looks really ugly right there. Um, but you know, not going for perfection right now. I'm just going to show you something cool. Now, one last thing concerning saving these files. If all you did was paint over the edges and make it nice and you know endless, 
you can just close the file and say, save yes, save changes and click OK. Um, and it'll save changes to the original file. If you want to save a seamless one, you know, do a file, save a copy, make a different name with seamless and then save that as JPEG or PNG. But if you have altered the shape of the image or if you use any kind of layers like, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, an adjustment layer or if you did my little, uh, you know, shifting trick like that, Photoshop sees it as more than just a flat rasterized image. Close this, say yes, save changes. Now it's saying PSD, which is going to be an obnoxiously large Photoshop document file. We don't want that. So to save these, if you did any uh, skewing or layers, right click on the base image and do flatten image. And now everything's flat within the bounds and rasterized. So then you can close it, say yes to changes. Okay. And there you go. So that is it. Hope you guys enjoy this. If you're a Blender user and you also are frustrated by tiling, please, please, please go purchase um, some of my Blender products down in the link below because I have a anti-tiling node group that can take tiled images um, that do have uh, awful edges and it can spin them randomly and untile them. And it basically allows you to apply an image to a large you know, size mesh and there's no obvious edges and it can do stuff that you can't do here in Photoshop with my little thing that I taught you here. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. I also have some really great PBR uh, texture pack that I've assembled. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions or you want to tell me how much this technique blew your mind, go tell me in the comments down below.